you are supreme over everything and over everybody. And Lord, we are grateful to be your people. We are grateful to be your children. Thank you, Father, because you are the one that liveth and abideth forevermore. You were, you are, and you will continue to be. We are grateful. Father, this morning, we ask that you will bless us again, especially in this session, that the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus again, will receive understanding, and will receive the grace of obedience. I will not just hear the word, but it will make impact in our lives. It will do what God has sent it to do. We receive the word of God as the word of God this morning and never as the word of man. We ask that every word will be exactly what you want to say. Great Holy Spirit, be free in this place. Establish the counsel of the Father in our lives. And point attention to Jesus Christ alone. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. This morning before we go, I want to continue looking at the series we are dealing with titled Strangers to Glory. Because this is our season of glory. And it is a duty under the Holy Spirit to let you know those people who are strangers to that glory. That even though God is talking about glory in this season, that these following people are strange to that glory. They will not be able to connect to the glory and they will not be able to manifest the glory. And it is important for us to make sure that you are not part of this group because God will do what he has promised to do. So that you will not, because of your own weakness and character, disqualify yourself from what God had already done. And that is why we are here. So the first one is the perpetual spiritual child. You remember? We took time on that. And the second group of people that will not manifest the glory of God are the ignorant people. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. At a level, they rejected the available knowledge. That's why they go into captivity. God is a good God. He's not a bad God. But when people reject his knowledge, he becomes helpless to bless them. And then the Bible says, we will know the truth, and the truth will make us free. And when we are talking about the ignorant people, we are not talking of the people that didn't go to school, or that didn't have formal education. We are talking of the people who do not know God, who do not know the ways of God, who do not know the word of God, who do not know the spirit of God, and who do not know the method of God. Such people can be easily deceived by the devil and they will not be able to manifest the glory. And it's very important for us to know. Praise God. And uh, I discovered that we've gotten to a level that we began to look at the identity of the ignorant people. I call it unveiling the ignorant people. Unveiling them. Identifying them. So that you will make sure you are not in that group. In fact, in the season of glory, you must deal with ignorance. You must allow the knowledge of God to take over your life. Because that is your platform for the glory. Ignorance will damage you in glory. The glory of God will be too heavy for ignorant person. The glory of God will be dangerous for an ignorant person. So it takes a, 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 somebody who has the knowledge of God that can properly manifest the glory of God so that the glory can be used for the purpose of God. 
And we ask a question. Who are the ignorant people? You remember, they are into three groups. Number one, they are believers who do not know and who do not want to know. We have spoken about that. I gave you the different characteristics of such believer. But today, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the remaining two. Today, who are the ignorant people? Since they cannot manifest the glory of God, they cannot even connect to that glory. Talk less of manifesting it. So who are the ignorant people? Number two, the ignorant people are the believers. I always put that believer in inverted comma because their belief has a, has a question. The ignorant people are the believers who think they know when they don't know anything. Who think they know when they don't know anything. Reality most time is not what you think. Reality is what you know. What you know. So we have believers in this end time who are in the group of the ignorant people and who will not manifest the glory of God in the season of glory. Not because God is wicked, but because they are ignorant. Ignorance can cost you a lot of things, especially ignorant of God and ignorant of his ways. So the believers who, are, who think they know when they don't know anything. Did you get that now? They are the ignorant people. As I look at the Bible, I discover that the ignorant people are today's scribe and Pharisees. Today's scribe and Pharisee. You know we have scribe and Pharisees in the Bible. And these scribes and Pharisees in the Bible are teachers of religion. But they don't know God. They are teachers of religion but they are not spiritual. They don't know God. They don't know his ways. They don't know the spirit of God. They don't know the word of God. But they teach the religion. So that is the scribe and Pharisee in the Bible. Up till today, we still have such group of people in the church. So the people that do not know, but they think they know, are the scribes and Pharisees of today who seems to be very close to church but very far away from God and far away from the knowledge of God. Such people cannot manifest the glory of God. I want you to write down Matthew chapter 15. When you get back home, I want you to read from verse 1 to verse 20, you will see the nature of these scribes and Pharisees who do not know anything about God, but who think they know. Because we still have such people today in our churches and in the blood body of Christ generally. Let me read a little part of it. Matthew chapter 15, I read from verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? You see, that is their passion. That is their focus. Not the law of God. Not the purpose of God, but the tradition of the elders. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Look up. The Pharisees are people whose hearts are dirty, but whose hands are clean. Can you imagine? Anytime they want to eat, they wash their hands. They wash everything, but their hearts are dirty. But their hands appear very clean. 
The Pharisees are the people that are concerned about the outside and are not concerned about the inside. The focus of God is not their focus. The interest of God is not their interest. They boast themselves of their knowledge of religion. But unfortunately, they are deficient of the knowledge of God. They easily blame and condemn other people as transgressing the tradition. When they don't mind, even though they are transgressing the law of God every day. Fanatics who care about the outside. Who easily see themselves as holy people. And easily condemn people as unholy. When their inside is not holy. Do you understand that now? Hello, do you understand? We still have such group of people in the world. They don't know what they should know. They don't know what they should know. But they think they know everything. Nobody in that group will manifest the glory of God. Because the glory of God is not hypocritical. The glory of God is genuine. The glory of God is real. The glory of God is authentic. And the God of glory himself is a real God. It's not a God that pretends. Let me see. Look at verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the dead. But ye say, Whosoever say to his father or mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father, or his mother, he shall be free. Do you see now? They find a way of undermining the truth. They find a way of undermining the wisdom of God. They find a way of undermining the word of God. And yet, they promote their tradition. And they claim to know when they don't know. Ye hypocrite, verse 7. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But what? Are you there? But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. You know, they are worshippers of God. But their worship is in vain. Because their heart is far from God. The Bible also says, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Instead of teaching the commandment of God and living their life on the commandment of God, but they are teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. They gather together regulations that are regulations of men. Religion that has no conviction. And that's what they do. They specialize in that. And people see them as they say they are big, big religious people, but they don't know anything about God. Unfortunately, we live in a generation that such people may be members of churches and such people, unfortunately, are pastors in churches. Standing in front of people every time, thinking they know when they don't know. Such people will never manifest the glory of God. And I want you to understand that your pure knowledge of God and your pure knowledge of his word will compel you to live your life in accordance with the commandments of God. Your pure knowledge of God will burn the fear of God into your heart. Because until you have the fear of God in your heart and in your life, you do not know God. The knowledge of God is a function of the fear of God that you have. Either men are there or not. Either people are looking at you or not. When you have the fear of God, when your heart is right with God, then you know God. Don't be somebody that is close to the Bible but is far away from the God of the Bible. 
Don't be somebody that is close to the church but far away from the God of the church. Are you hearing me now? Those groups are in the group of Pharisees and scribes of today. And let me tell you some of their characteristics. These characteristics are the reasons they will not manifest the glory of God. Are the reasons they will be strangers to glory. Number one, they find it very difficult to settle down in a church and learn the ways of God. They find it very difficult to settle down in the church and learn the ways of God. They are very restless. Because anytime they come, they come with the mindset of what are they going to teach me? I already know. So there is nothing anybody can teach me. I used to pastor a brother before who was very, very funny. Very funny before he left church. Are you forgetting what I'm saying now? So he had been coming and coming, but he had problems settling down. I called him. I said, look, settle down. Let's know where to classify you. Let's know what to do with you. Don't be a member in church that your pastor doesn't know what to do with you. Are you following what I'm saying now? Hello? Are you with me? Don't be a member of a church that your pastor doesn't know what to do with you. So you must settle. That's why I told you. I said, settle down now. Are you in or out? Where, and each time he comes to me, come and tell me about, he will come and tell me about his former pastor. Ah, his former pastor is very bad. Ah, his former pastor is very this, da, 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 da. Unknown to him that his former pastor is my friend. <laughs> Praise God. And that from the first day he showed up in church, I called that man, my friend, I said, ah, your son <laughs> showed up in my church. So what's he doing? <laughs> and he said, and, and my friend said, let him stay. If he wants to stay with you, let him stay with you. <laughs> he has a problem and he needs help. No, nobody is right. He's the only one that is right. Pastor, you want to teach the pastor what to preach on Sunday. I said, I said that because you will soon find that about him. That's who he is. So I said that to you so that you can know how to help him. Hello, somebody. Are you following me now? Now, he didn't know that uh, I know that man, that man of God, and then we are discussed. Because I'm not going to have anybody in church that it will look like I am covetous of snatching other church members. Especially when, you are, when the person is coming from a church where the word of God is being preached. And I know that the word of God is in that church and God is there and the glory of God is there. I would rather settle the issue between that person and his pastor and return him back to his church. Is that okay? But when I know that the word of God is not there and that they are just cheating the person and that the person is just wasting away and all that, I'm going to take that person because... What is important is the salvation of the, of the souls of men. Because there are some pastors, they are abusers of men. When your pastor does not teach you the word of God, take the pain and the thoroughness to teach you the word of God and to live a life before you that is challenging. That pastor is cheating you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You should have more than enough if a pastor is doing a good job. So when I see that people are being cheated, they don't have access to the word of God that can bless their life. I accept them when they come. Are you hearing me now? But when I know that they have enough of the word of God from where they are coming, and I know that church is a correct church, is the church that has the candlestick in heaven with Jesus, and it is just because of one issue or the other, I would rather ensure that that issue is what? Is settled. I return that person back to their church and then let's, let's continue to serve God. I've seen that happen before, that I've done that, and I've also seen a situation whereby I settle a case and the person returned back to his church and his pastor is not mature enough and he begins to despise him and mock. I say, I, I, told, I told him he will return. See, he has returned now. See, he has returned now. See, he has returned now. I told you he will return. And then the pastor continued to mock him. And then the brother felt so bad. And he came back to me and said, Sir, he's mocking me. Is this is not. I said, Okay, come over. Come and stay in church. That's not a mature pastor. 
That's not a father. Are you hearing me now? Every father should be happy when your son returns home. You are not supposed to make him a subject of, of, of message every Sunday and say, I, I told them they will return. I told them they will return. That's immature. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. So I told this brother, I said, said to that, he didn't know I had any conversation with his pastor. And then, and that his pastor told me, if he wants to stay in church, let him stay in church. Let, let him stay with you if he wants to stay with you. <laughs> but you will soon discover who he is. And every time he comes to me, we just come and talk about his pastor, how he's terrible, how this, how that. And then one day I said, stop talking about the pastor. Because if you talk to me about your former pastor, you are going to talk to another person about me. You are not showing signs that you really want to settle down. You are criticizing. And you want to make me feel that I am the best pastor so I can entertain your gossip. And very soon, soon you will leave and you talk about me to another person. I said, where do we place you? In or out? So that I know what to do with you. Because every correct pastor must know what to do with every member. How many of you know that every one of you individually are on different program? With God. Hello? Do you know? And I'm not a stupid pastor to believe that all of you are in the same level of spiritual maturity. And I don't compare you. I deal with each person as he comes and then help people because church is a hospital. To feel that Perfect people are in church is to be ignorant. We are not perfect. That's why we are in church. To learn about the word of God so that we can get along and know very well and become stronger. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Church is not a perfect place because there are no perfect people in church. Church is a place of perfect where we are perfecting people. On the way to heaven. That somebody is coming to church doesn't mean that he, has, he is mature, he is fully mature spiritually and all that. No, everybody is growing as far as the word is flowing. Are you following what I'm saying now? So this brother has a problem settling down. So I said, settle down. I said, settle down. And then one day he decided to settle down. And then I told pastor to take him through believers class. And when, he was taking, when they were taking him through the blood, at, at one time he came to me, he said, ah, ah. he said, sir, in fact, when I first came, I never knew there is anything new that anybody here can teach me. I laughed. He thought that he was the one telling me about that. He didn't know that I have read his attitude and I knew about that. That, hey, believers class, ah, I never knew that anybody can teach me anything. I thought I knew everything. Anybody, anywhere, no matter his level, even if he's a pastor, that believes he knows everything is a fool. That is the greatest demonstration of ignorance. Do you know there are many things we don't yet know? Hello? That we will still know. Because once you believe you know everything, you will not open yourself to further knowledge. We will keep knowing things. We will keep knowing things. We will keep knowing things. Do you know there are many things we will never know as long as we have the garment of this flesh on? We will never know. No matter how high we are, that it is when we drop this gap, this mortal gap, and we enter into immortality itself, that we will know certain things. The Bible says we know in part. Somebody say we know in part. So which means that is a part that we will never know. Until we remove the liability of this body in death. Or when Jesus comes back again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I want you to understand your calling to be a learner under God. A student under God. And always have that posture. It will help you to manifest the glory of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So after some time, this brother began to criticize. I said, but I told you, you will reach that junction. <laughs> Praise God. He began to criticize. Hey, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I said, well, sit down. If you want to sit down, sit down. I've been doing this thing years ago, and I know it's the word of God. So if you don't like it, well, you can, you can, you can move. Praise God. You can move. At a point, he said, let's negotiate. I said, what are we negotiating for? He said, um, just allow me to come anytime I want to come. 
but I have my own allegiance to one other ministry. That ministry is not a church. It's just a ministry. And they taught them that they should go to their church. That the, their own is just ministry. So he said, let me do what I have to do there. And any time I show up in church, you agree with me. I said, there's no problem. Hello? There's no problem. Anytime you want to come, come. I only know that you are not one of the sheep that I'm looking after. Did you hear? Anytime you want to come, come. But make sure you don't sit in the front. Because my message may be too long for you. You may want to go before the service ends. Just say at the back. So when I'm preaching too long for you, just and you want to go somewhere else, because you are an international Christian now. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Just carry your Bible quietly and go out. Don't disturb the people that the only thing they know is what I am teaching them. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Let them enjoy the flow of God. And then with that, there's no problem. He said, there's no problem. I said, one more thing. You won't call me in the night to pray for you. You won't Call me to pray for your son or daughter or whatever. If you have any issue with your wife, you won't bother my head with that. If you come, I see you. If you don't come, we're not going to look for you. Ah, he said, eh? If you, if you, if you have a child, I'm not going to do the naming service. <laughs> he said, ah, ah, ole to yen, ah, ole to yen, Everybody believes that members, they want to enjoy members' response, members' right. They don't want members' responsibility. I will be cheating other people. There are people that this is their church. Those are the people that have the right to call me anytime tea, and I will answer them. Those are the people that I can go and meet them in their house, pray for them, pray for their children. Those are the people that I can flow with. I can follow with. They, they have access to anything that, is, that, is, that God has given me. Because God gave me grace because of them. If they don't come, if they don't come to church, I'm going to look for them. Because they are the people that any time the work of God calls, they are the people that will respond. You will not have all the time to respond. God's people, am I fair? Am I fair? Praise God. <laughs> but you know, young young pastors they will easily deceive them uh, young young pastors that are looking for a crowd they will say okay come don't worry anytime you just come we will be everything we can be to no 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 if you don't have the time to serve God you shouldn't expect to enjoy the goodies in his hand are you hearing me now I believe it is a it is a Free mentality not to want to be responsible and you want to get all the benefits. So at the point he left church. What was his problem? He thought he knew when he doesn't know anything. Up till today, he's still walking around. Years after he, I mean, years after he left, he will, he will come secretly and, and get my book. You send somebody to come and buy it. He doesn't know I know. Praise God. And one time, the person came and looked for it. But I said, okay. I said, I'll greet him because I knew he sent you. He said, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. No problem. Uh, tell him another one will come out very soon. I already told him the title. So you can buy it. That's no problem. If he comes back today, will I mock him? No. Come back since I die in church. He will only continue from where he stop, And then we continue to move on. Can he be a pastor of this church? Oh, yes. Provided the changes and he's ready to go through whatever is good. That's no problem. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. How many of you know that if the devil changes today, Jesus will receive him back? God will receive him back. How many of you know that if the devil has the capacity to repent today, God will forgive him. God will receive, God will receive him back. God will restore him to his position. But he must win trust. Amen. Don't be in that group. Always get a learner's attitude. 
Don't be too big to learn things from God. Because you can never know everything about God. But these people, they find it very difficult to settle down and learn. You always see that in their attitude. Number two, they are proud and empty. That's why they won't manifest the glory of God. That's why they won't participate in this season of glory. They are proud and empty. To be proud is enough error. But I know some people that are proud, but they have substance. But the tragedy of these people is that they are proud, and then they are what? They are empty. They have nothing to offer. When they open their mouth, it is foolishness that come out. Praise God. Number three, they parade ignorance and foolishness. Unfortunately, we have some of this group of people as pastors in our generation. As pastors in our generation. Those who have not known enough of the ways of God to stand in front of the people of God. Because a man must understand the ways of God. The people of God will see the act of God. But the man of God must understand the ways of God. The ways of God are different from the acts of God. If you don't know the ways of God, you will not be able to differentiate between the acts of God and the acts of the devil. That's why it's easy for the devil to be walking and you easily think it is God that is walking. And when you miss it and you think it is God that is walking, when the devil is the one walking, you will be a victim of a wrong influence and inspiration. You will open your spirit to wrong spirits. Thinking it's God. And many people are in that position today. That is why they can manifest the glory. I see a lot of pastors in our days that are in this group. They don't know the ways of God. You can only show God's people what you know about God. And then I see a lot of members. I see a lot of Christians in this generation that are in this group. They parade ignorance and foolishness. Number next, they are incorrigible in error. They are incorrigible in error and are blind to wisdom, truth, and discipline. They are incorrigible in error and are blind to wisdom, truth, and discipline. The ignorant people, those who think they know when they don't know anything, are incorrigible in error and they are blind to wisdom, truth, and discipline. Now, when somebody is in error and uh, is corrected and he accepts it, it's easier to help that person. Yes or no? Yes or no? When somebody is in error and the person is corrected and he accepted it, do you know it is easier to help that person? Do you know it is easier for God to help that person? Hello? But this group of people, when they are in error, when they are in clear error and they are corrected, they will not accept. Are you with me now? And they continue in their error. They are incorrigible in error. And they are blind to wisdom. They are blind to truth. They are blind to discipline. That's why they won't manifest the glory of God. Don't ever be in that group. Don't be incorrigible in error. That you are in error and then you are being corrected and then you feel, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. In error? Don't be a Christian that is blind to wisdom. When you see wisdom, you should, you should recognize wisdom. It doesn't matter. Wisdom may be coming from your child. And you are the father. Recognize wisdom. Not that where who is this boy talking to me. No. After all, he's my son. After all, I'm the, I'm the father. I gave birth to him. So what can he know? When you see wisdom, don't be blind to it. Is somebody hearing me now? 
You must be honest enough because that is what it will take for you to manifest the glory of God. To open your eyes to the truth. To open your eyes to discipline. Praise God. Ah, error. Somebody say error. Somebody say error. You know, let, let, let me tell you something that I want to use this that happened to really explain that. You know, there was a fight that took place in Saudi Arabia yesterday between the former heavyweight champion and, and the Ruiz and Anton Joshua, the Nigerian-born British citizen. You remember? Praise God. You know, the issue is not about the fight. But after the fight, the former champion fell and then Anton Joshua took his position back. And when they were doing the post-match analysis, the one that lost the battle was granting a press conference and they were asking questions. And they asked him, why did, you lose your, why did you lose your belt and all that and all that and all that? And he, he made something that, that really means something to me. And I think you should know. You know what he said? He said, well, I know exactly what happened. He said, um, it was because of three months partying. I was partying for three months. And I didn't listen to my trainer. He had a major fight. Heavy weight, world championship level fight. Are you hearing me now? And he used three months for party. To celebrate the fact that he became the world champion. Not knowing that he won't be the world champion forever. I think he became the world champion maybe in June. Alright? And another fight is coming December 7th, which was yesterday. And the person that lost the fight in June started preparing immediately. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? But the person that, that succeeded in June started partying for three months. For three months. Are you hearing me now? Even before they fought that fight, they discovered that this, the one that lost the battle yesterday had gained more weight. But the one that is now challenging to get is had lost some weight. So I told mommy, I said, this person can he fight? This person is going to fight. He had gained more weight. He had more stomach. More, more. I mean, I say, can, he, can he box? But he himself said it was because he was partying for three months. You have a major fight. You are doing three month party. And I can imagine a lot of drinks, a lot of reckless life, a lot of sleeping with women of easy virtue and all that. For three months. So which means the whole of June, the whole of August, the whole of September, he was frolicking and enjoying himself. And he wanted to come and fight December 7. And his opponent that wanted to get his belt back had gone back to the drawing board from the first day. Exercising himself and getting ready. And he said that he didn't listen to his trainer. That they told him, this thing will not help you. He didn't listen. He just said, let me enjoy it. Three months. But well, yesterday, the result came out. It was beaten very squarely. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. I remember a particular match that, uh, I think in 1989, praise God, our flying, eagle, flying eagles then, the likes of Michael Yemashara, um, quite a number of them, Sam Elijah and all that, because they beat USSR in their quarterfinal match when they were 4-0 down and 25 to go, they level up and they beat them and they qualify for semi-final. You know what they did? They went to sleep. They party to the morning that they are going to have their semi-final match with Paraguay. All kind of harlots were in their hotel. 
are drinking and sleeping and partying and partying and partying. Thinking that semi-final is also going to be a war over. When they go to the semi-final, even the blind person know that these people are not ready. Because their legs were too thick. They can't run after the ball. Somebody that slept with a woman till daybreak, will he be able to play and run? So they beat them off. Don't be incorrigible, especially when you are in error. Listen to voice of wisdom. That is where your glory manifestation lies. Don't be a person that will be in clear error and you will have voices of correction and you will, you will not listen. It's going to cost you glory somewhere. Yes or no? That man lost his belt yesterday. He lost glory to a to level. Yes or no? Hello? Because if you, don't, if you don't learn from the things you can see, you may not understand the ways of God. Amen. So don't be incorrigible in error. But these people, they are incorrigible in error and are blind to wisdom, truth, and discipline. Number next, they overrate themselves and possess a false sense of personal importance. They overrate themselves and they possess a false sense of personal importance. They believe they are more important than they really are. And it is a false sense. That's why they will not manifest the glory of God. In another word, they have an exaggerated opinion of themselves. They have an exaggerated opinion of themselves. They have an exaggerated opinion of themselves. Those who don't know and who think they know. Those who are in the who are today scribe and Pharisee, just like the Pharisees of old time, they have an exaggerated opinion of themselves. The next one is the lack brokenness. They lack brokenness. They are not broken. They are not humble. They are not broken. They are not humble. That's why they will not manifest the glory of God. Number next, they are irresponsible and unaccountable to spiritual authority. They are irresponsible and unaccountable to spiritual authority. Those are the group of ignorant people that believe they know when they don't know. They are not responsible. Some of them know what to do, but they won't do it. And they are not accountable to any spiritual authority. They have a sense of, I can do whatever I like. Nobody can question me. I come when I like. I go when I like. Praise God. I'm not accountable to anybody. Those are the set of people that are the most dangerous. Either they are male or female. Praise God. I tell people that want to get married, find out who your to-be husband, who does he fear? Who does he respect? And who is he accountable to? When you see a man that, doesn't, that is not accountable to anybody, ladies, that's a dangerous man. Don't go with him. Because he will do anything he likes with you. There must be somebody in your life that you respect and that you are consciously accountable to. Somebody say, well, I'm accountable to God. That's stupid. That's, that is when people want to when people want to do what I call the Joro. You know what they call the Joro? <laughs> when they want to do what they like. That's when they say, I'm accountable to God. I'm accountable to God. I'm accountable to God. All of us are accountable to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But listen to me. There are people that God 
wants you to be accountable to so that you can be correctly accountable to God. They are physical, spiritual authority. And that it is safe for you to be accountable to righteous spiritual authority. Because it is then you can be fully accountable to God. The Bible says, how can you love the God you don't see when you hate the brother that you see? Which means, God wants to use physical relationship to teach us spiritual relationship with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Have you had people that say, well, I don't belong to any church. I'm a child of God and I belong to the body of Christ. How many of you have heard that before? It looks like a very good statement. But it's a very foolish statement. It's like somebody saying, well, I don't have any father. I don't have any mother. I just belong to the world. So ask him, does he have a son name? And he said, yes, of course I have a son name. But you say you have no father. So where did you get that son name from? You know, most people don't know what they are saying. They just talk. You say, I'm, 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 a, I'm a member of the body of Christ. I don't belong to any church. Jesus Christ is my pastor. I say, no problem. If Jesus is your pastor, my spiritual mentor has taught me, tell those people, do, do, do they know the office of Jesus? It's at the right hand of, of God in heaven. So, go there. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? My own office is here. <laughs> Number eight, Syria Carrier State One. That's my own office. Are you hearing me now? <laughs> but those words that Jesus is their pastor directly, let them go to meet Jesus in the right hand of the Father in heaven. If they come back, good luck. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Can any man say every woman is my wife? I don't have, I don't, I don't have any, I, every woman is my wife. And you will agree that he is okay in the head. <laughs> Talk to me. Eh? Eh? Can anybody say everybody in town is my, every, every child in town is my child? Ask him, do you pay school fees for everybody? Say no. How can I pay school fees for everybody? <laughs> hey, but everybody is your child. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So it's very important. It's very important to be accountable. But the ignorant are irresponsible and unaccountable to spiritual authority. And I tell people, even if it's a woman that you want to marry, and she is not, she's not afraid of anybody, she is not, she doesn't respect anybody. Nobody can query her. Nobody can calm her down. Nobody can stop her. That's a dangerous woman. You must never go with. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So people that will manifest the glory of God, they will be responsible and they will be accountable to spiritual authority. But the ignorant people are not. They are haughty and rebellious. They are haughty and, re and rebellious. It is easy for the devil to afflict them with the spirit of rebellion Especially when they are not accountable to any spiritual authority. Did you get what I'm saying now? It's easy. It's easy. When you see a child that doesn't have any father figure in his life, those are the children that will first of all lead riots in their school. I don't know if you hear what I just said. Do you know what I just said? I don't know if you know what I just said. Hello? We were chatting yesterday. Well, myself and mom was chatting with somebody yesterday. And then we discovered that there is a woman that keep painting the husband bad in the face of her son. Keep painting the husband bad in the presence of her son. To the point that the boy does not have any respect for the father. You know there are some things that women will do for their son. That a wise woman will tell the son, I should give you. Make sure you thank your father. Even though it is not the father that said you should do that. That's a wise woman. She is building a saving 
the future. That's what I'm saying now. But for women that they'll tell the boy, your father is a useless man. No? Care about you. I'm the one doing everything. No? He's not a responsible man. And they begin to talk. You know that women like that. And then the boy will grow up never to respect the man as a father. That's a foolish woman that has destroyed the future. Because the boy will be seeing the man in his heart as a figurehead. You will respect the man and the time is coming that the woman will not be able to control the boy again. When the boy is still small, you can still tell him to sit down and you'll be destroying your husband in front of him. But when he becomes taller than you, you will know that you have wounded yourself. Because at that point, he needs an authority figure to bring him to order. Since the one he calls a father, he doesn't have respect for him. When he goes out without sense, they are the one that will be hooligans, that will have no respect for teachers, that will have no respect for authority anywhere. They will become defiant in society. And they are the one that will easily lead riot. And lead the rebellion against constituted authority in, in societies. Because charity, they say, begins from where? Are you hearing me now? But when you have a child that grew up having respect for his father. Are you hearing me now? Knowing what a father should be. And uh, the word of the father carrying weight in his heart. Oh, beloved. When he goes to the society, he will respect authority. Yes or no? That's the truth. So, don't ever, just like a, 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 a man should not speak ill about his wife in the presence of the children. Especially when they are not yet mature. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Especially there are children that are mature. That even if you know, they, will, they will work to ensure that there is no trouble between the two. I, they are they already grown up and mature. They know their father as their father and they are not going to hate their father. They know the difference between right and wrong. Are you following what I'm saying now? And you can't hide anything from them again. Because they are not, they are not small children. But I'm talking of when they don't know anything. When their heart is very soft and innocent. Either you are a father. Don't talk bad about your wife. Don't, don't transfer the issues between you and your wife. It's not their business. Let them grow. And if you are a wife, don't talk bad about your husband to your children. Don't contaminate their heart. Let them grow. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Because once you grow in an atmosphere of authority, you find it very easy to respect authority. Such people that have problems in their homes, when they get to church, they become problem to the pastor. Or more to, to respect Baba. Show no more respect in the pastor Baso. Show no more respect because the children teach Baso. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Or more to, yeah, or Jolo, you show no more respect to children teacher. Or no more respect pastor. Or no more respect to teacher in his school. Do you know some parents will follow their children to school to go and abuse teachers? Are you hearing me now? To go and abuse teachers? Just because the teacher is trying to correct the boy or the girl? Amen. Mommy saw somebody recently and I used to be a member years ago. Long time ago. Then he has a son. She has a son. She has many children but I think the first son. That boy was he was, he was has become hooligans. And he has a stature bigger than his age at that time. The woman was always fighting with children teacher at that time. Any children at a point I told the children teacher abandon the boy. Don't since year of We don't know the father of the boy. 
Up to today, I don't know the father of the boy. Praise God. So I said, don't, don't, don't leave. Because if you want her quarrel, you want her just, just correct the boy. So if you can tell me now that your pastor is a woman, I don't know if you have a good job. I don't know if you have a good job. Because once you try to correct the boy, the woman will become terrible. And she can be a very terrible, cantankerous woman. And then he spoiled, she spoiled that boy, spoiled that boy. So, so that boy was just harassing people. So, and the, anytime the children's department wants to stage a play, and the, they want a character for a thug, it is him they will use. And he will play that role very well. Are you hearing me? And then when I discovered that this boy, the mother does not want anybody to correct him and all that. And I don't want him to feature again because I don't want him to be having negative influence on the other people. I said, children department should be staging their play with English language. And I know the problem of the boy, he can't speak English. Don't joke with pastors. I'm giving you one pastoral wisdom. Are you hearing me now? So I said, to develop our children, I can, I can, secondary school, I saw you, and blah, blah, blah. let them speak English. And then tell him to speak English. Eh, 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 what? <laughs> Doesn't know. So we skim now and all that. Praise God. He was in the same class with Ayon Fed that time. And so recently, mommy met with his mother. And then the mother was, the mother, my, my wife was asking about, what about this person? What about it? Ah, and the woman said, ah, are you hearing? That's, that's the language the woman used. Ah, he, he messed up. How? How? What? The, the, the woman said, he would, he would have finished the same time I have finished. But they sent him away from his school because he messed up big time there. They rusticated him and he had to start all over again. He said he's just starting in one school now. And then when mommy came and told me that I met so and so today and then say, Hello? She been told me. She been watching a race or is, he, is she surprised that the boy messed up? When we were did you hear what I'm saying now? So I told mommy, I said, is she surprised? Is she not the one that sent him that errand? Is she not the one that, that laid the foundation for his hooligan, I mean, his trans and all that? Why would they not send him away from school? When he has nobody to respect. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says nobody can mock God. Whatever you, you sow, you will what? You will reap. I said, may God help us so that uh, the boy will not mess up again in that place. Because that thing has become his blood. Hello, somebody. Amen. So it's easier for people who don't know anything and who believe they know everything to be rebellious. And then finally... Their shallowness will disconnect them from glory. Their spiritual shallowness will disconnect them from glory. Praise God. So don't be in that group, beloved. Let me take the last group. The ignorant people, number three. You remember when we started, the ignorant people, they, they are believers who do not know and do not want to know. Number two, that's the one I've just finished now. There are believers who think they know when they don't know anything. Church is a school. And when you are coming, you must come with the mind to learn. But this is the greatest form of ignorant people. Number three, there are believers who are ever learning but are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are believers 
who are ever learning, but they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Beloved, this is about the most dangerous one. They are always learning. But they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know the meaning of that? What they are learning is not reflected in their lives. It is the sign of the end time. Look at what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm reading verse 7. When you are coming to church, if you are going to manifest the glory of God, and you are learning every time, Always let what you are learning reflect in your life. The more you know about God, the, more, the better your life should be becoming. Allow the truth to transform you. Allow the truth to change you. Don't just know many things that doesn't show in your life. You are still in the class of ignorant people when you learn many things but you don't come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let me read from verse 1 so that you know exactly where we are coming from. Paul the apostle was talking about the sign of the end of time. The sign of the last days. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Beloved, we are in that last days. Yes or no? These days are indeed perilous. Verse 2. How do you know? For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. Now look at verse 7. Ever learning. Somebody say ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Do you know the meaning of that? They are always in church. They are always taking notes. But the note does not show in their life. When it is time for them to show forth the truth, they don't have the capacity. So in the sight of God, they do not know. They are ignorant people. And they won't manifest the glory of God. In our days, we have people like that as believers. We have people like that as members. We have people like that even as pastors. Always learning. Always learning. There are pastors that when they teach about fornication, ha! Ah, but tomorrow they are, go, they are they're already living fornication. Sometimes I find, I find it in my heart. Your girlfriend is seated in front of you and you are teaching about adultery as if I say, how do, how, how do they how, how, what, 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 what demonic boldness? What demonic audacity? Do you know one of the reasons why I can't cheat in exam is that when I was very young, when I was very small, when I did not know Jesus, I wanted to cheat one day. I wanted to try how cheating looks like. Do you know even the way I'm behaving, that's, they will catch me. I'm telling you, even the way I'm behaving, they will catch me. <laughs> they will catch me. Do you get what I'm saying? Because if I say I want to cheat, that's the day they will catch me. Because the way, I'm, the way I will be behaving, you will know that, what are you doing there? What, 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 they, they will catch me. But there are some people that are very smart. They will be cheating and they will be smiling. Sometimes, what kind of a devil is in their heart? How can somebody be spiriting in front of his girlfriend and will be saying an adulterer will go to hell and his eyeball to eyeball with his girlfriend and he's still and the anointing is still flowing? Ah. Oh, there is a problem. 
Sin doesn't say anointing should not flow. Anointing will flow. Samson was sleeping with prostitute and he was still carrying the gate of a city on his shoulder, walking on the hill. The anointing is still flowing. Are you hearing me now? He that God wants to kill, he first of all make them mad. Is one proverb. Is he right? I don't know. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So it's very important, beloved. You don't know things that you are writing down until it begins to show in your life. The Bible is not for knowledge. The Bible is for living. We must be living the Bible. How does God rate your knowledge? God will rate your knowledge by your life. And let me tell you this. I have to really, I have to really talk about this because listen to me. This third group of ignorant people are always in good churches. Bible-believing churches. Where the word of God is very sound and thorough and deep. Thank God it's not all churches that are bad. God still has churches on this earth in different planets of the world that are doing the will of God. Yes or no? Yes or no? Because almost what you hear every time is that churches are bad. Churches are this. Churches are this. Beloved, oh yes, some churches are bad. But let me tell you, there are still genuine churches. In different parts of the world. God still has people that are doing the will of God. And to the will of God, your church is one of those churches. And the third group of people are always members of good churches. That's why every one of us must check ourselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The word of God is coming in depth. It's coming regularly. But is it showing in your life? Because until it shows in your life, you are ignorant. To men, you may have all the Bible in your brain. But does it show in your life? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So the ignorant people are believers who are ever learning but are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I want you to write down these characteristics about them and then we'll pray. Number one, they are always around and are available to learn. They are always around and are available to learn. You see fellowship you see them in Bible study. You see them in Sunday service, Sunday school. There is nothing wrong about that. That's good. That's what everyone should do. They have notes. They take notes. You see them in mentoring school. You see them in leading light. They are always available. And they are always available to learn. Number two. They take notes. And they go through series of training. They take notes in church and they go through series of training. But unfortunately, their manifestation do not justify the divine investment in their lives. This is where the problem lies. They take notes, they go through series of training in church because the church that such people belong to is a church that value training. They train people and all that. But these people go through different trainings. But unfortunately, their manifestations do not justify the divine investment in their lives. Don't ever be a believer like that. Praise God. Until your training reflects until your training 
reflect in your manifestation. Until the word of God you are hearing begin to manifest in your life as obedience. You don't know as far as God is concerned. You don't know as far as God is concerned. And it is very important for us, beloved. We shouldn't be so proud and say our church is a good church. A pastor is teaching very well. Our church is a school of the spirit. And all that, that is normal, the normal pride of people that goes to good churches. But beloved, our focus must be that what I'm learning in that church is it manifesting in my life because until it does, you are ignorant. And ignorant people will not manifest the glory of God. If God will judge us by what we know, how many people will be free? That's why you should be humble every time. Number next. Their lives do not commensurate with the divine exposure and depth they have been opportune to experience. Their life do not commensurate with the divine exposure and depth they have been opportune to experience. What God has shown you the depth that he has revealed to you. The opportunity you have to receive the word of God. Is your life commensurate to it? There are some things that ordinarily because of the level of the word that you have been exposed to, you should never do again. Are you still not doing those things? Anybody going to a very solid church and good church must be a minister himself. Even though you don't carry the title of a pastor. Hello, somebody. Hello. You can't be coming to a church like this and tell me you will not be a blessing to some other people. What you would need to lead your family, what you would need to be a good wife, what you would need to help other people, in your extended family, in your place of work and all that, is what you receive every time in church. Anybody that goes to a sound church will be receiving what I call minister's diet. Somebody say minister's diet. And when you get outside, you must, not, you must be living a minister's life. Not that you will receive something very high from God. And you will go and manifest very low in life. Don't be a person that receives something very high from God. And you will now go and manifest very low in life. There are some places that it will be, it will be horrible if we meet you there. Hello? That if we meet you there, we will, we will open our, our mouth. We will not be able to close it. Because you would have so much disappointed us and disappointed God. Why? Because of the level of the truth you have known. Not everybody has opportunity to receive truth. So we should not be going about thinking that our church is good, our church is good, we are this, we are that. That's, that's nonsense. We should be showing the truth that we know with our life. That is when we are justifying the truth that we are listening to. I want to pray for everyone here that you will not disappoint God. I can't hear your amen. I can't hear your amen. If I'm walking in the street or in town, and they tell me, daddy, 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 one of your members is fighting there. You think I will wait? You think I will wait? Hello? You think I will wait? I will wait. Oh. I will deny the person right there on this board. I don't have a member that will fight. 
I come and walk away. Good morning, I can't do away. Come and buy less. I could do a good good buy. I won't do it. I will just walk away. Well, no, you're a circle. Go now. Catch your maja. Can pastor, eh, pastor, nipo, eh, me, me, che, pastor, eh, oh, me, oh, Mario. Sorry to bad dress, what you, Baba. Say hello, Mary. Cool, Lord, I'm a little Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. There are some things that you must know about the ballot way, mop a little boy or a long time boy. I'm not saying we are now perfect now, that we are now getting to heaven. But there are some things that you mustn't do again. If truly you are justifying the investment of this grace, God is training us so that we can be leaders in our generation. Praise God. That everywhere you go, you will make impact for Jesus. One of my sons came visiting on Thursday and I told him, I said, look, the battle has, has left church. Church is now a training center. The real battle is outside. So when you come to church, you receive the word of God, you are filled, you are equipped. When you go out, you must begin to demonstrate that truth. Did you hear what I say now? Begin to show it. The Bible say, not all those who called me what? Lord, Lord. Shall what? Shall enter heaven. But those that are learning. Abby? Those that are writing down. Is that? Hello? But those that are doing, doing, somebody said doing, doing, doing. There was a time I was telling you eight things you must be doing. How many of you remember that time that you must be doing? That this kingdom is the kingdom of doing. It's not a kingdom of what you say. It's not a kingdom of what you know. It's a kingdom of what you do. Because until you do it, you don't know it. Are you hearing me now? How many of you in sincere, in sincerity, in sincerity of heart believe that there are some places that they should never meet me? How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? Where, uh, uh, our pastor? Uh, no, no. Our geo? No. That I, that I, that I won't become How many of you believe that? Okay, you believe that about me? God believe that about you also. I believe that about you also. If you meet me there, will I appoint you or disappoint you? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. God also will be disappointed. If with what you are hearing, you are still living a life that shows that you are not you are not maximizing the grace of God. What it be no bad day wafara ya wafara ya de be o te wa can lose book bo sense ye pata pata ati da oro sile gbogbo oro ba cha ba ti da sile gba to ba se lotu wa o pe ha oju awa wa ti egan to gbo gan mo ko ti soroju are you hear what i'm saying now that must go what did i say that must go that must go that must go i see the holy spirit showing you who you are to today so that you can value yourself better and then get ready for the glory. Is that okay? This group of people, the availability in the place of training and equipping does not translate to concrete knowledge and learning. I'm just explaining what I've said. Their availability in the place of training and equipping does not translate to concrete knowledge and learning. These people are wasters of grace. May you not be a waster of grace. How many of you know the grace that is going into all the word of God you are hearing? How many of you know the grace that is going into all the word of God you are hearing? They are wasters of anointing. How many of you know the anointing that goes into the word of God you are hearing? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. How many of you know the investment of time that is going into the word of God you are hearing? The investment of time? Last week, Thursday, I, I started 
I started a message by 8 o'clock in the morning. I did not finish preparing that message until to 4 in the evening. Last week, Thursday. Until to 4. And this is a message that within 3, 4 hours, I'll be through with it. And somebody will say, ah, message in your cheek. Ah, ole, ah, ole. And it will be a disaster. If you hear that message and you go out and you are, you are living a lesser life. Do you know you are wasting the time? You are wasting the grace? You are wasting the investment of the Spirit of God? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many of you know it takes time to sit down in church to listen to the Word of God? Huh? You have been here since morning. This is the one. And I'm still teaching. Is it not time we are spending here? Hello? How do you justify that time? By becoming a better person. By going out to be as you have received. By becoming a better husband, a better wife, a better child, a better mother, a better father, a better person, a blessing to your world. That is when the time you have spent sitting down in church will be meaningful. You will not come in vain. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to waste my time. If, if I'm not ready to do it, let me not do it at all. Hello? Let me not do it. Instead of not doing and we are not showing my life. I'm wasting, wasting everything. No. Praise God. Their impartation does not reflect their manifestation. How many of you know that as I'm preaching, impartation is taking place? Do you agree? Impartation is taking place. If this word is touching you, impartation is taking place. It's imparting something to your life. Let that impartation produce manifestation as you go out. Let your husband be able to thank God for the, for the truth she is hearing. Let your wife be able to say the same thing. Let your father and mother be able to say the same thing about you. Ah, we thank God for, thank God for, we thank God for this person, we thank God for this person. Praise God. Praise God. You know, about, uh, think about, um, think about, uh, is it up to three weeks now? Not, uh, maybe not up to three weeks fully. Uh, I remember it was precisely November 20-something, just last month. Are you following me now? As somebody we have pastored years, 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 years ago. I pastored him when I was, when I would go around and be calling people that the service will soon start. Hello? I pastored him when I would have to first of all go to his house and carry all his children to church before he can come to church. Praise God. He's no longer in church. He has left church years, many years ago. Even before I went to the university, he has left church. So his wife. And I pastored the man and his wife and all their children. Their first son now is outside the country. He has become taller than me with big beard. And these are young that I used to carry on my shoulder to bring them to church so that their parents can come to church. So the wife died. The wife of the man died and it touches me because when we met in a particular uh, burial service of a general overseer and he told me that he had also lost his wife. So it touches me. When, when, when is the... And he told me, okay, no problem. I didn't commit myself but the son connected with me on Facebook and said, Daddy, I would love to. The son is in, I think in his son, Australia. And he told me, Daddy, I would love to have you at my mother's burial. And I promised the young man, I said, I will come. I made it a duty. It wasn't convenient for me that day. But because I promised that young man I was going to come. And this is a young man that has seen me Close to 30 years now. So I said, I'll come. 
And that day we went. The rain was falling. We were under the tent. We were there. I never knew that somebody else knew me there. Praise God. Just seated down there and all that. And then they were, uh, the, the rain was pushing under the tent, pushing under the tent, pushing under the tent. And somebody carried his own seat, I mean, our own seat, to want to come and give me to exchange position with me because she was in a better place that the rain cannot reach her. Are you hearing me now? And when I looked at, when I looked at, I discovered it's the mother of uh, Brother Ayo. God. And she greeted me. I greeted her. How are you? How are you? And then she asked me, she said, Daddy, can you still remember me? I said, I can never, I can never forget you. I can't for you to be really real you now. <laughs> I can be very jovial. And, uh, I said, I can't for you to be really real you now. How are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. And she said something that made me praise God. Praise God. And she said something that made me praise God. She knelt down inside that rain. And she said, Daddy, I thank God for your life. And I thank you so much. I thank you, Mommy. Ayo himself is hearing for the first time now. Mommy was there. Are you hearing me now? So what she was, the, the pressure and the problem she was giving time, she now believed that she was wrong to be doing that. And she's thanking God that he eventually allowed Ayo to set you in church and follow God. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? We bless God. We bless God. And she knelt down in the rain. And everybody was there. And mommy said, stand up, stand up. We thank God. We thank God for everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, is Ayo. Ayo, what's your surname? Have you changed it to Ayo? What's your name now? Hello? <laughs> huh? Have you changed it? Are you planning to change it? <laughs> Praise God! Amen! Okay, the young man is the pride of the parent now. But that time, the mother did not understand what we were driving out that time. But I also thank God for, for Ayo himself. Who decided to say, look, I'm going to stay under God. I'm going to stay in church. Even when he travels, he still follow up and follow up and follow up and follow up. Today, the testimony is here. That his own life and his own race and his own journey joy, that's the language. Only in joy, yato, pata, pata. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. That's what I want to be hearing when I go out. And I believe that is what God wants to be hearing. Is it not the truth? 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 Is that <laughs> the junior officer to that woman, also a junior officer to me when I was in the civil service, one day, the woman, I, I think the woman knew I'm um, her pastor. Because myself, I was there, mommy was there, and the woman was talking, oh yeah, I, hey, and, and you cannot loan pastor any by you. And me come up with any you die, any to your member, what? I'm not proud of her. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So the woman was saying what she did to her. What she did to her. What she did to her. I was terrible. And the woman was saying, Church, you are not going to be a dickness. Oh, yes, that's what she said. Are you hearing me now? Could I make a motive withdraw title with dickness in your ticket? I can't announce any. You are but in Bata Yeo, but you commensurate Bellu Yen, can we draw a coma? Oh, come, dickness, shall we tie to chat? 
aux fonctions. Hello? I won't go the pain of bringing you out. I won't go the pain of bringing you out. Whatever God has given, it doesn't collect it back. But the substance will be gone. Are you hearing me now? Watch him, I pastor, no, I won't come back and say, a pastor, more, but I won't go back follow along that. That I'm the one more. You pay any, you pay on the party, any, you pay pastor. Ah, are you hearing what I'm saying now? But the woman did not know the inner workings. Only could it only a little book of pastor will look at Mommy, look at me, look at mommy. Who could you say anything? I bet I'm on la. To go by best, you are la. Who could you say anything? I listen, Coco. Tora wa gama, we are on it. I she shake back. Or any, I she shake me, daddy, I she shake. I she shake. I she shake back. Are you hearing me now? You be calling me so tiny. Only one row alone, la ye. Johnny, yato, pata pata, pata, mode row, you know, la right. Let God be proud of you. That's when you will manifest the glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. That is when you will manifest. I tell my children, Tomba Nikolomu, Yewa, Lomu Baba, Yewa, Tojin, Kankwani School, Oh, Oh, Ni Baba, I won't follow you there. I tell my children, I won't follow you there. She Nikon Lo Nikon Lo Kwe, I feel almost will look back, go price in one time. Lo Kwe Baba, Yewa, Ah, trust me. Ma, Ma, Kaba, Da, Gwan, Lo, Be, E, Mini, Baba, Yes or No? Because I am not going to come. I tell mommy, tell your children, go to school, come back, be obedient, and do everything. I'm a pastor, I'm a man of God, I don't have time for nonsense. Nobody will come and call me. Come on, you check. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. So I tell them, I wear that out. Pass that that Okumaki can't me a little baby. I won't go there because I'm going to marry him. But one, 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 so one more. I should do it. But I don't want to talk to you. Don't want to talk to you. Yes, sir. You know, I'm on you. You get what I'm saying now? If I didn't do that for my biological children, you think I'm going to do it for any member? Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I know Bokolo Kombe, a tiny pastor, a meal mori, a miko. A meal mori, rise up on your feet. Are you blessed this afternoon? I want to pray for you this afternoon that you will not just be passing through the things of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit will be passing through you in the name of Jesus. Now, listen to this aspect of it, listen very carefully. Because if you don't understand this message, you would think the pressure is only on you. Listen to me. Greater pressure is on me. I am doing everything I can do and with the help of the Holy Spirit not to disappoint God, not to disappoint you. Did you hear me now? Ibo mi wato ja pe ido tito ye king ba mora ma gba mora nitori pe mi o fe je Olorun kule mi de fe je eyin kule. But me too, I can't see sorrow. My dark, I can't see what you're doing. stupid. But because me, you're a young man, you're a young man. It will be a shame for you when you hear of your pastor, when the pastor will say, Pastor, he's a pastor. 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 He's a and a pride to God. Ko deta ko so kwea. Reverend Oshini is my pastor. Ko so kwea. You are very lucky. Ah, you are blessed. Ah, that man of God. Is this, is that, is that. Uri ea wun ti mo fe niye. Are you hearing me now? He will not. The pressure is on every one of us. Because the standard of the word of God is what will be used to judge me and to judge you. En ton wa su o bolo abe wa su nan. We are all there together. Until we get to heaven, we must watch each other's back. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I won't do anything that will make you look stupid outside. 
And you shouldn't do anything that will make you look that will make me look stupid or make the church of God look stupid. Every one of us should seek to please God and to make ourselves proud of ourselves. Lift your hands to Jesus this afternoon. Say after me, Father, as from today, I will never be a disappointment to you and to your kingdom. I will not waste the grace. I will not waste the anointing. The truth will reflect in my life. What I'm hearing will show in the life I'm living. Open your mouth and begin to pray. And I pray for you today that the Lord is going to help you. The Lord is going to help you. In your street, they will know you as a woman of God. They will know you as, ah, that this person, let's follow her to, let's follow her to, his, to our church. You will be a pride to God and a pride to God's people. Lord, as from today, I will not be a waster of grace. I will not be a waster of the anointing. I will not hear the word of God for, for, for fun. I will hear it for real. I will hear it, I will write it down, and I will leave it out. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me, Lord, to transform everything I'm hearing to life. Help me, Lord, that what I'm hearing will change my life, will reflect in my life. I will be getting better by the day. It will show that I am hearing the word of God. People will know that ah, this woman is going to church. This man is going to church. This person is going to church. I will not waste this knowledge. I will not be ignorant. I will carry the glory. Let's talk to the Lord.